This video is sponsored by our 30-day diet and habit change program, 1K30. Go to 1K30.com to learn more. None of these are beautiful soups, and that's okay. Soup is not the most beautiful thing unless you've really got an artistic eye. But you've got a black bean, you've got a veggie, and you've got a corn chowder. You can make these as intricate and detailed as you want but they all taste good regardless of what they look like. Hi guys, it's Shalva with Life is No Yolk. We are doing three hearty soups today. These are veggie forward, filling, nutritious soups that are awesome because if you don't have all the ingredients, you throw in whatever you've got. We're showing you a few bases of delicious soups that you're gonna love and they're gonna make you feel full. The first one we're doing today is a corn chowder. It's from the Vitamix website. Uh, we read some of the comments. We're gonna make a few of the edits that were suggested in there. So follow along. First thing we're doing is chopping up an onion. This is one of those soups that you cook on a pan and then you do the final blend in the Vitamix. The first step is sauteing some onions for about five minutes. So. Those of you that are whole food plant-based, just skip the oil and saute in water. So this is one of those soups that is like accidentally vegan. Like there's no um, dairy or meat products in it, but you don't actually notice. So you could serve this to people that are trying to eat less dairy and they will love it. So this is a corn chowder corn chowder from Vitamix's website. And what's cool about this is that you can kind of um, decide what texture you want. That's what I like about using a Vitamix to make soup is like, if you're someone that likes chunkier soups, you leave it chunkier and you can control that consistency. If you like it really, really thin, you just lend it to obliterin. Obliterin? Obl ob Oblivion. Oblivion. <laughs> Come on over. I'm gonna watch it sizzle. I dropped an onion. Easel. They're jumping. All right, so we're gonna wait for those to brown. So the next step is to cut our potatoes into large chunks. So you can choose if you wanna leave the skin on. I'm going to, cause there's more nutrition in there and it's annoying to have to take the skins off, right? Keep them on. Okay. Large chunks. Because it's getting blended anyway, it doesn't matter if they are the exact same size or pretty is going in the blender. And these are raw potatoes? These are raw potatoes. So this is one of the soups that we're cooking on the pan first, and then we're gonna blend for texture. The soup we're gonna do next, you cook completely in the Vitamix. So this recipe says it takes 35 minutes to make total time. So that's pretty legit for a weeknight dinner, 35 minutes including cook time. When I was a kid, I loved corn chowder. I don't know that we have introduced corn chowder to our kids, but like corn is sweet and delicious. Um, so I think lots of kids would like it, yes. If you've got a picky eater, maybe not, but I think of the three soups we're making today, this has the best chance of kids liking it. All right. We're gonna throw the potatoes in. Those look nice. Smells like hopple popple. If you're trying to stay away from sodium, you can buy low sodium broth and not use all the salt in the recipe. That's an easy 
substitute or not substitute omission to make. I'm trying to pour this in a non glug way, but it's gluggy. All right. Cover and simmer until potatoes are tender, about 15 minutes. Say that one more time. After that's done cooking, we're gonna pour it into the blender and then we're gonna add corn that isn't blended in so that there's some consistency to it still. Um, so that you have some, it's a nicer word than chunks. Texture. 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 So we're gonna cook these for 15 to 20 minutes. We're just waiting for the potatoes to be soft because they have to be cooked before they go into the Vitamix for this soup. So we'll let them simmer until they're soft. It's winter in Minnesota, so we do not have access to fresh corn on the cob right now. But if you're making this in the summer, that would be delicious. We're using canned corn. You could use frozen corn. You could shuck your own corn and freeze it yourself, whatever it is. Corn, they're all the same, corn. What's the TikTok kid? I love corn. No? No. no. Corn! <laughs> you haven't seen it? No, is it like a turtle guy? No, like it's a turtles. kid. It's like an eight-year-old kid and he's like exuberantly telling the camera how much he loves corn. And he's like, corn, corn. That's hilarious. It's cute. That looks oh. yummy. That's gonna be good. We'll check it with a fork in a minute. I like how you didn't have to cook the potatoes for this one. You just throw everything in the pot and then... The potatoes are cooking. They're cooking. It's not like you have to bake them in a... Like, yeah. They're cooking in there. All right. Fork it. Let's see. Not quite. I'm going to put them in for five more. It said 15 to 20. I think if I had had the heat on high enough, it would have just taken 15, but we'll go to 20. Fork. Whoa. I think those are good. They're like a tiny bit al dente, but not like, what do you think? What would Paul Hollywood say? No, they're good. Carefully pour the mixture and the milk into the container. Heavy. All right, so we've got the onions, the veggie stock, the potatoes, the corn, and I'm adding in milk. You can do any milk you want. We're doing almond milk in this case. We're gonna spill it all over the counter. Make sure you spill it everywhere. All right, and then we gotta read what it says to do. Low speed, increase to seven, blend for 10 to 15 seconds. So we're not going all the way up. Usually, usually when we make a soup, we blend on 10 speed to make sure that it's creamy and smooth, but this one we want a little texture, so we are not doing that. Ready? All right. <laughs> looks awesome. Do you want to see it with a spoon? So it's like thick, 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 thick corn chowder. So obviously if that's not your style, you can blend more or add more liquid. I think it's going to be yummy like this. What do you think? Good? Yeah, I think it looks great. I think we should try it. Well, we got to add stuff still. Return the mixture to the saucepan over low heat. Stir in the corn and season with salt and pepper. 
delish. I like it thick like this. Will it be pretty on camera like that? For sure, especially with some stuff on top. It's a chowder. Chowder. It looks kind of like polenta. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And it doesn't have salt and pepper in it yet. I was going to say, so you could add some salt and pepper. It would be amazing. Yeah, don't put that back in there. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll cut that out. <laughs> Ready? Okay, so we're pouring the corn chowder back into the pan. And then we're going to add our seasoning and the rest of the corn. And we're just going to heat it back up on low heat for a few minutes and then serve it from here. Chowder in. Extra corn so that we have some more texture in. And then I'm going to do salt and pepper. Salt and pepper, obviously, to taste. Again, if you're trying to keep it low sodium, just don't put salt in. It's delicious without the salt, actually. All right. Turn this guy back on. So we get piping hot soup. Look how pretty. Not used to seeing soup in a pan like this, but I think this is the right way to do it. How's that look? It looks great. We're home cooked, so like it's, yeah, this is a saucepan, but like, mm -hmm. I already like rinsed it all out, but it's still gonna do a wash cycle. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. Really good. Really, really tasty. You could do a million things with this too. Like you could season it in any way. You could put anything you want on top. It's like a really good soup base. And I think you could easily hide other vegetables in there too. If you wanted to put zucchini in, if you wanted to put uh, parsnips in, like other things that are um, don't have a bunch of flavor because the corn is pretty flavorful. So we used the recipe off Vitamix, but we added an extra cup of corn into the cooked mix. So that's the difference. And like I said, you can, you can thin this out. If this feels too thick to you, this is a really thick soup. If this feels too thick to you, you can keep blending for another few seconds, or you can add more veggie broth or more milk and either of those things would thin it out a little. The base has potatoes in it, so it's gonna be thick. That's like, what you're looking for. It's delicious. It's a win. So the next soup we're making is a Cuban black bean soup. This one is also from the Vitamix website and we've never made this one so I'm really excited to try this one today. Black bean soup is a really good way to like get extra protein um, and beans are really filling legumes, if you will. Um, so this is another one that's plant-based without like really trying to be plant-based. It just doesn't need any substitutions and it's good to go. Um, this soup, we are cooking in the Vitamix. So this is one thing that makes this blender like special out of other blenders is that uh, you can cook soup by using the friction inside the container. So the dull blade inside spins and spins and spins and spins, and it makes the friction of the soup like this, and after like six or seven minutes, depending on what container you're using, it's hot. Like serve it out of the container hot. So this soup, I had to prep the potatoes for. Um, you could skip the potatoes and it would be just as delicious. And I'm needing to use a saute pan to make the onions and garlic cooked before I put it in the blender. But after we do those steps, it goes into the blender and you serve it from there. So it's not a just pour all the ingredients in and cook it in the blender. There are some steps to do beforehand. 
basically. So with the potatoes, that is something that I would do beforehand. I probably wouldn't do it today. If I'm making dinner uh, like three nights ago, meal planning wise, if I had something else I was making potatoes with, I would throw a couple on the side for this recipe that I would be using later in the week, if that makes sense. Um, so that I didn't have to cook potatoes, saute vegetables, and put stuff in the blender. Right? This says half of an onion. And again, it, the chopping doesn't matter as much as it would because everything's going into the blender. So it doesn't have to be uniform in size. No one's judging your knife skills when everything's getting blended up in a blender. Raw onion and cooked onion are a very different flavor profile. Okay, so the reason that I'm sauteing the onions and the garlic and the pepper first is that the Vitamix is really good at heating soup but it can't actually cook the ingredients. So I'm putting cooked onions, cooked garlic, and cooked peppers into the Vitamix to heat it up to soup temperature to serve. All right, so I'm doing a tablespoon of oil. Again, if you're whole food plant-based, skip the oil, saute in water. Again, now garlic, pepper, three small garlic cloves. How many bulbs are you putting in? Three. You could always do more, but you can't do less. All right. So this is one of those recipes where if you don't have all the ingredients, you should still make it. I don't have a green pepper that it's calling for, but I do have a red pepper, and I actually prefer the flavor of a cooked red pepper over green, so I am using red, and that is great and fine to substitute or use ingredients that you like will not change the basic flavor of the soup. Again, this is all going in the blender, so I don't care what it looks like. It does not need to be beautiful. All right, so this is also going on the saute pan. Beautiful. All right, and then we're gonna cook these until they're like tender. So it says seven or eight minutes, or seven to 10 minutes. We don't have a steamer, and this recipe called for steamed potatoes, so I used our metal colander and just set it in the pan with a lid on top and put a little water in and let it steam like that. You could also use, um, I know a lot of people use their Instapot to steam vegetables. Um, I don't take mine out of the cabinet very often. I wouldn't notice if it was gone. Uh, but you could have also baked these potatoes and used them too. They just need to be cooked potatoes. All right, ready? So it says to deglaze the pan with one tablespoon of white wine vinegar. I have no idea what that means, but I do know how to put white wine vinegar in the pan. So whatever that means, I'm doing it. Deglazing, my first deglaze. Oh, that must be what deglazing means. Okay, white wine vinegar, one and a half tablespoons of ground cumin. My other set of um, measuring spoons never had a half a tablespoon, and this one does, and lots of recipes call for a half a tablespoon. One and a half. Okay, that's a lot of cumin. Uh, one bay leaf. We have bay leaves on hand because we use them in our wild rice soup recipe, which is like our most popular recipe. 
and so I stock bay leaves like we always have them. And then oregano, can't even remember the last time I used dried oregano, but we have it. Half a teaspoon, tablespoon, tablespoon. All right, give it a mix. Looks spicy. All right, so these are supposed to be Cuban flavors, I guess, since it's called Cuban black bean soup. That looks much less appetizing than it did before. <laughs> Yuck. Okay, cook for one minute, toasting the spices and coating the vegetables, then add the veggie broth, the black beans and everything else into the blender. Oh, you need three and a half cups because you need some to put on the top. That's why. It's three cups in the recipe and then half for making it pretty. I've never blended a bay leaf, have you? It's aggressive. Is that, is that legal? I don't think so. I guess we've put it in in a spice mixture before, but I've never just like straight up blended it. Not sure how I feel about that. All right, let's go put everything else in. I am adding the salt just because I think with beans, it's a, for my flavor profile, I would, I want salt, but you can obviously skip that if you want. Okay, broth into the blender. We need four cups of veggie broth, and I believe that's one full container. Glug, glug, glug. You can obviously make your own chicken broth, or chicken broth, veggie broth. Veggie broth in. I think I was saying you can make your own veggie broth. That's totally legit if you have time and a lifestyle that affords you the opportunity to do that. Okay, black beans going in. This is a black bean soup, so black beans. This was two cans of black bean soup. I'm gonna leave this much so that I can put them on top later. That was two cans of black beans. Um, if you were making them homemade, uh, like soaking beans overnight, and if you've got time to do that, uh, it's three cups. Okay. Mixture going in. Ooh. Toasted spices deglazed pan. It's like a real chef made up this recipe. Look at that. <laughs> okay. It smells, really it smells delicious. And then we add the potatoes at the end. So this is like heating up. The, I poured cold beans, cold broth, and warm vegetables in here and I will be able to serve this out of the container, which is pretty awesome. So if you want, you can set a timer for yourself. So this particular model of blender, this is the A3500, the Ascent series, has a timer that you can set like this, like a microwave, so that I can set it and then walk away. So I'm gonna press start. Blending. Back to blending. Want to see it steamy? 
So remember that the friction of the blades heated this soup up. So I poured in room temperature broth and um, cold beans and it is steaming hot. Serve it straight out of the container hot. Yum. All right, so the last step is to add one potato. And you could skip this. I think the soup would be perfectly fine without potato in it, but potatoes are yummy. That was too fat to get through the lid plug. All right, and this just says one for 15 more seconds. Hello. Okay, I'm just gonna blend on high for a second. So pour it, goes straight out of the blender into a bowl, which I think is really cool. That looks super creamy and smooth and delicious, and it smells really good. So this is one of those soups that you obviously have to garnish because that is not cute, but it does smell and look like it's gonna taste good. But that is an ugly bowl of soup right now, but I'm gonna taste it before I garnish it. Yum, it's really like cumin-y, like spicy. I could even go for more spice. I know in recipes they kind of keep the spices down to make sure that everyone likes them. It's really smooth, like something, a soup you would get like at a restaurant. It's really, really smooth. Like, can't taste anything but the homogeny of all the flavors together. I would probably put more salt in mine and maybe spice it up a little, but it's delicious. Do you want to try it? It needs salt and garnish mm -hmm. and texture. Mm -hmm. So this is one, this is not what the recipe on Vitamix calls for, but I would put a bunch of cooked quinoa in this and that would make it heartier and make it healthier and give it some texture. It's very smooth and some people love their soup like that. I like texture in my soup. So I would even maybe go the extra mile and do crispy quinoa on this, which is delicious and not that hard to make especially if I was serving this to guests. If I was just making this for myself for lunch, I'd eat it like this. But if I was trying to make it fancy, I would throw some quinoa, especially crispy quinoa on there. And I would crack some salt and pepper on top. Um, but it is very, very good for an easy, uh, healthy bean-based soup that you could do anything with. This is a blank slate at this point. So go crazy with your garnishes, which we'll do in a little bit. So the next soup we're gonna make is, ew. I just got black bean soup on my nose. Come on. The kids aren't even here and I have food on my face. Okay. Yeah. The next soup we're making is called the Hungry Farmer Soup. And this is a recipe from our Pain in the Mouth cookbook which is a cookbook that we do, um, that we offer to orthodontist offices, because after you get your braces on, your mouth hurts, and you hate the person who put them on you, and it's a way for the orthodontist to be like, hey, I know that I gave you pain in the mouth, but here's 20 awesome, amazing, delicious, healthy recipes that are gonna make your mouth feel better. Um, so if you're interested in this, you can um, click the link below this video, and Lenny will send you one. He'll send it to your orthodontist office for you. So there's soups, and smoothies and juices and frozen treats and all the things but today we're making the hungry farmer soup the only thing that i had to prep beforehand was the potatoes um, so like i said before if you're meal planning for the week if you've got another recipe that has potatoes in it pre-cook a couple and throw them in the fridge so that you can use them in this recipe later um, so i'm going to throw all the raw ingredients in and the vitamix is going to heat it up so i can serve it straight from the container just like the black bean soup but in this case, I don't need a saute pan. I don't need to put anything um, on heat before it goes in. So the Hungry Farmer soup has 
eight stalks of celery. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I just happen to have eight. Great. Eight stalks of celery, two garlic cloves. One, two, uh, one potato, cooked potato. Cook this potato before you put it in your blender. It's a cooked potato. Okay. And then like a half inch uh, sliver, sliver, slice of onion. Remember that this is raw onion. It's not cooked. It's not a sauteed onion. So you don't want to use that much. You just want a little bit in there. You want to be able to see it. Make sure it gets you a better angle. Mm. Uh, okay, so we have celery, garlic, potato, onion. Now we need four cups of vegetable broth. So again, that's a full container of one of these. Uh, if you want to make your own, you certainly can. How do you pour it without it glugging? All the way upside down, maybe? Squeeze it. Put the hole on the other side. So you need a 64 ounce container to be able to blend this much. If you have the smaller container, you would have to have this recipe because this is going to be a pretty full blend. All right. Four cups vegetable broth, half a cup of cashews, raw or roasted. We use raw almonds. A life hack is to buy the cash almonds. Did I say? These are cashews. A life hack is to buy um, the cashew pieces instead of like if you buy these full, you know, the kind you would find like at a, in a nut mix when you're having beers or whatever. These are more expensive than cashew pieces, which would be like, our dog will eat that. <laughs> Tiny little pieces that are crushed up are much less expensive at the store, like a good dollar a pound less. So, um, ground pepper to taste and a half a teaspoon of salt, which is optional. Crack, 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 crack. You can always add more later. Half a teaspoon of salt. One. Two. All right, it says, place all the ingredients into the blender or a food processor. Don't do that. And process at high speed for 60 seconds or until smooth. Okay, so this cookbook is made to say if you don't have a high-speed blender. Now, if you're watching this video, you probably do have a high-speed blender, like a Vitamix. So we are going to cook it on high speed for five minutes. If you do not have a blender, you can make the soup like in a food processor and pour it on a saucepan. We're gonna cook it, heat it on the Vitamix. So five minutes, high speed. And again, I can set the timer up if I want, or I can just put it on high and set a timer for myself or watch a countdown. So I'm gonna do a five minute timer. Ding, 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 ding. Boop. Start. <laughs> Ramp it up. All right, so this one should steam up too. Hot and ready right out of the blender and it's a little bit bubbly but those should go down celery is notorious for being bubbly in recipes especially if you're making like a green juice in the morning but one trick to get bubbles out of something that you're blending in your vitamix is to just run it on low speed for like 30 seconds and that takes some if not all of the bubbles out we do this with our green juice every morning so hopefully that works with this soup as well just kind of pops the air bubbles in there I can already tell that they're going down. There's still some big ones on top, but I think it's less. Yes. Still the same smoothness and consistency, but a little less air bubbles in there after blending on low for a few seconds. Should we give this one a try? Looks yummy. 
This one is not nearly as thick as the other ones are. Yum. Super good. That one's surprisingly good. Surprisingly good. I was like, mm, I'm not really excited to try. It's really yummy. You can taste the raw onion, but in like a good, like hits you in the back, like here way. Celery is really the main flavor that you're tasting in this. But if you told me a restaurant had celery soup, I would not order it. This is delicious. It's really, really yummy. And again, I would put stuff in here. If I was having this for lunch, I would put crispy chickpeas on here, or I would put, I would even eat this one with rice. I could put brown rice in here or orzo or something just to give it a little bit more oomph, but it is delicious as is. And again, it has potato in the base. So it's like, it's hearty. It's going to fill you up regardless of what else you put in there. Yum. All right. So there you have it. You've got three veggie friendly, filling, fulfilling soups for the winter. These are all excellent soups to start kind of your base. None of these are beautiful soups and that's okay. Soup is not the most beautiful thing unless you've really got an artistic eye, but you've got a black bean, you've got a veggie, and you've got a corn chowder. You can make these as intricate and detailed as you want, but they all taste good regardless of what they look like. So if you like recipes like this, Give us a follow, subscribe on our channel, and we're so happy that you were here. See you next time. Bye, guys.